I'm Ebony Nada, a charcuterie director for Columbus Craft Meats. I make charcuterie fun for the masses. I've been sharing my love of salumi with the world for over 15 years. We're in San Diego, and I'm going to meet up with local food expert Choi Johnson as we go and search for the perfect bite. So welcome to San Diego, brother. Yeah, thank you, thanks. The most underrated food scene in America, in my opinion. Yeah. This has become a craft capital. You know, a bunch of chefs realized that they can make a good reputation down here. It was a little bit more, bit more open. There was a little bit more breathing room for them to create. That's cool. I, I love San Diego just because it is more chill. It's just really all about the personality and you get to understand there's a story and everything. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that we're really trying to build more than anything else is just tell a story through our bites of charcuterie that we're building. But San Diego is all about the story, I think. And, in the background of just the passion of staying with your craft and well, I can't I can't wait to go check out all the things you've lined up for us in terms of trips. I'm super excited to oh, yeah, man. see everything. We got, so, yeah. we got plenty of stuff to do, so much yeah. stuff to eat, man. Uh, can't wait man. Let's, Let's check it out. Let's do it. We're visiting with culinary experts and artists, people full of passion and enthusiasm, who have been cooking and creating their entire lives. Now this is the Hall of Fame of cheese. We have 100, 125 different kinds. For our restaurant openings is we make a giant table of charcuterie. It's seriously, it is the most fun. So I'm a nerd, I'm a beer nerd. I'm part of the Cicerone program. You do yeah. really well on Food Network, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we eat some weird stuff. <laughs> when the kids get home from after school, yeah. we always just have some of the, the pre-sliced stuff. Yeah. And they're just like <laughs> Yeah, people care what's in their products now. You want the good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. just the quality over quantity. Oh, it's worth every penny. You want to find those flavor hooks. And we eat with our eyes. We all eat with our eyes. I mean, yeah, if you do, and especially in, in today's Instagram world. Yep. So, and, and cheese and charcuterie are easy to make beautiful. And I think that's what food's meant for. Is it's, bring, yeah. it's to bring people around it and surround it and have conversations and laughter and story sharing. Totally. And nothing brings you together like a big charcuterie plate. Yep. This is the big bang of food in San Diego. Yeah. yeah. This is this little farm stand in the middle of kind of our agrarian section up in North County, right? The best fruit. Like, I mean, the kind of stuff that you taste and you're like, that's not even what I think that fruit tastes like. No, I'm excited. I'm excited because like the quality just matters so much when it comes to the freshness of the fruit and the flavor that it brings on our charcuterie board, especially for your eyes and your taste buds. And you can just yeah. see the beautiful color. And, and you can smell it, yeah. you know? Yeah. You see it, you smell it, you taste it. You yeah. put that and you make a little compote for the charcuterie board. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. Tasting with your eyes is a lot of what brings people into the charcuterie board in the first place. So all these colors just bursting on a board. Just... Everything just pops. It's just oranger, yeah. better, yeah. more ripe. Mm -hmm. When you have your raw ingredients, right? As you know, I mean, you gotta use a good cut of meat. Yeah, it starts with that. Yeah. You gotta use good ingredients. Otherwise, you know, your finocchiona, your sopressata, whatever is not gonna be good, right? It's the truth though. And it's interesting because you think about, you know, salumi, you know, you think about charcuterie, you think about what you guys do, that yeah. takes so much time. You want it to like, you know, age and, and you know, and, and sit and develop those flavors, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But this is the opposite. So you want to pair it with the opposite. It's like exactly. time, a lot of it, and no time. Get it immediately from the ground and that's a perfect pairing. No, that's true. You get the life right here and then you get the real love and passion of our salami just paired together. It just makes something special. I'm blown away by the incredible fresh produce we found here at Chino Farms. Now we're bringing it over to Chef Brian Malarkey's to experiment with his oils from Chef's Life. Let's see what happens. The work on the salami has already been done, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's been aged, it's been perfected. It comes to you as wow. Yeah. Now you just gotta build wow around it. I think that's what's key. Yeah, exactly. And, and we, we cut up some stuff and grilled some bread. And it's right. pretty wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it didn't Seriously. take that long at all No, either. not so at that's, all. And then time-wise, that's anybody, the only time to Anybody taste. can make a fun charcuterie plate because there are no rules, mm -hmm. you know? Totally. All right, so let's do it. So for Felino, a very, very traditional recipe, Parma recipe actually. So garlic, the sherry wine, all those flavors just go perfect. I think with all the different veggies you're building here, but especially something like a pepper mm -hmm. and having that kind of balance of just that beautiful meatiness and crunch, kind of 
Oh, look yeah, at that. Pull that right You're just making there. yourself a pepper canopy. Yeah. Look at Plain the, the service is. in this place, yeah, man. Yeah, you got to give that one a try because the tanginess of the chef mm -hmm. is just really going to kind of balance that crunchiness and sweetness of the charred pepper. And you have all the notes that would hit your flavored taste buds there. When you're talking about the bitterness mm -hmm. of the kind of the char there, you get the sweetness, mm -hmm. you get the butteriness, the umami from the salami. So feel oh, free to try yeah, that. The sweetness oh. of the chef that goes into the sweetness of the actual salami exactly. itself. Oh man, yeah. that grilled vegetable too. Yeah. It's all about the wow factor. Uh, yeah. Bringing in that wow factor, Ooh. thinking something new, really to get them diving into the board. You can make this go in so many different directions. We did the shishito peppers, and we were saying, like, kimchi would be amazing. We mm -hmm. could bring in the mustards, the whole grain mustards. You can get all the different jams. Okay. It's limitless. And the grocery store provides all of those great little condiments, yeah. the little fig jams and all those things. Yep. Everything's all of them you. incredible. You got the salami, slice it. You can even buy it sliced. You grill some bread, and you put it all together. Turn on the grill for oh, a little Everybody gets to be an artist. You know, yep. this is so much fun. A blank canvas, and it all starts with the great salami. Yeah, and look what we like... have now. Next, we visit Pure Project to learn how they brew beer for good and what inspires them to share their craft. Now, going into the dark notes, yeah. I love a good dark beer, especially. Yeah. And so for this one, this is Corliss. Corliss is a scientific term for hazelnut, so this is our best expression of hazelnut. It's organic toasted hazelnut from Oregon, organic cacao from Ghana, and then our shade-grown Costa Rican coffee from our friends down at Cafe Milagro and Manuel Antonio Costa Rica. You get that Costa Rican coffee flavor just all the way through it. It's so good. What I'm gonna do here, this is a little fun crazy bite on this one. Since we have flavor roller coasters in your beer that you do such a great job doing, a little flavor roller coaster here in this yeah. little uh, salami taco for charcuterie. We got a little bit of uh, Point Reyes blue cheese. Mm -hmm. This is a raw milk uh, blue. We got the dark chocolate caramel because a lot of times people are intimidated by the funky note right. of a blue cheese. So having that dark chocolate caramel just masks that funky note. Mm -hmm. So all that you enjoy is that creaminess. But with that dark chocolate and the heat from the Calabrese, it actually activates a little peppery heat at the end of the bite as well. Oh, so heck yeah. Let's try that together with this one and I think Cheers. it should be good. That's just very heavy, but easy sipping. And as you continue on that flavor roller coaster, just add a mm. caramelized praline pecan mm -hmm. to the mix. And then you finish it off with this little pear apple. Oh. Yeah. And really kind of cuts through that nice sweetness at the end. Mm -hmm. And then as you're sipping with this, it's really kind of bringing it back to that decadence. It's really nice that you have those, uh, especially with that uh, pecan worm, there's some little bit of that sweetness, which mm -hmm. kind of mimics that bourbon, that caramel bourbon that we see in an American bourbon. Totally. Um, there's texture, there's crunchiness while you're chewing. Yeah. It's exciting, velvetiness of the beer. There's a lot going on in the best way possible, right? Yeah. Creating experience is so important when it comes to just having a tasting menu. Absolutely, and that's kind of like what, what I do over at Pure Project. Yeah. As an advanced Cicerone, as an education program manager, they put so much time and effort into selecting ingredients, the process, the delivery. And for us, we have so many different tasting rooms and we want every single beer tender to feel empowered. So I relay what they say back here to the front of the house. They tell it to the guest and the guest is like, that took 13 months to make. That's made with 2,600 pounds of fruit. That's local organic Valencia oranges. Totally. Boom. Yeah. Beer should be an experience just the way uh, the cured meats are. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I love my job. And that's why you love your job too. It's really like for us, getting all the input from the cheese makers, from mm -hmm. the salami makers, really what makes all these beautiful artisan products pop. Benissimo Cheese has incredible options of the best cheese and charcuterie from around the world. Aesthetically, when you build beautiful charcuterie boards, a lot of it goes into the cheese and how you manipulate the, the size and the shape. So. Absolutely. We had one rule to begin with when we started, no cubes. Okay. I'm yeah. really yeah. against yeah. cubes because, you know, the old cheese trays, and still you see some, are little, little cubes. Yep. So we said anything but cubes. Cheese is not ice. Cheese is not ice. There uh -huh. you go. That's a good yeah. one. Cheese is not ice. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to use that one. Um, so we do anything but cube. When you build like this, just allowing people to just eat and break down the, mm -hmm. the beauty of it, but still keeping its form. I think that's just a perfect way to yeah. kind of nice. showcase that. And Joy, if you don't mind, we're gonna start just building you oh, some bites and really growing. I saw his hand already going. I'm just a happy passenger <laughs> in this love train. Totally. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 
chorizo. I can see this the paprika like kind of chorizo that. Chorizo casero, so you can see that beautiful color. Yeah. Yes. Have a little bit of fun more. What, what type of cheddar is this? So this was um, a Quebec vintage cheddar, so okay. Canadian. Just rolling it with a little bit of coffee. So we're gonna build a tiny bite off of this. We got the chili mango, a little chamayo mango here. Mm -hmm. And we got the sweetie drop pepper. And then <laughs> we got, and this is actually a Pedro Salunas coated in dark chocolate and cocoa, so. Now I gotta tell you, this looks like a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you should think of all of those things on, and that's a great thing that you're talking about. Even if it may think of, feel like a terrible idea to put so many different ingredients together, mm -hmm. you put them together and usually, well, I'll hold mm -hmm. on, judgment. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give it a try and see if it works. So. I don't think I've ever gone ew mm -hmm. and yeah. said, I won't eat this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I'm Finish missing this. That. Okay. And the thing is, oh, gosh, when you're talking bite. about building a story, as you chew all these things together, it almost creates like a mole effect in your mouth. And that's really what we're trying to build. The spices, the chocolate, the meat. I mean, it is like being down mm -hmm. in Puebla, Mexico, where mm -hmm. mole is from. Mm -hmm. And it really is a mouth mole. Yeah. That's, and that's the goal, really, to create like new experiences with just simple, easy pairings and bites like this. Mm -hmm. Charcuterie helps us create irresistible flavor combinations with simple ingredients. And you don't need a ton of things. I mean, I, I mean, look, yeah. we have a lot on this plate, and this is very elaborate, yes, absolutely. But the basics down to it, mm -hmm. it's really well-aged meat, really well-aged cheese, or unaged cheese, mm -hmm. but fresh and, and delicious, mm -hmm. and local bounty. I yep. mean, it's yeah. just a, a bunch of different flavors, very simple blackberries, yeah. a little bit of sugar with heat. It's mm -hmm. not rocket yep. science. It's not. Exactly. You don't have fig jam? I bet you have apricot or something in the fridge. Grape right. jelly would yep. be delicious, yeah, right? Yeah, totally sub things Oh my in gosh, go to the, the fridge. Time. I always say, get the mustard. Get anything you have in your fridge and try it as the sauce on your board. Yeah. But start with the good um, basic ingredients, the, the cheese and charcuterie. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? Absolutely. Yep. That's always a great tip to do. I think here. so. It all starts with the I'm meat and cheese. But... Yeah, and <laughs> the meat and cheese are always going to be yeah. the superstars. The stars. And then yep. just the accoutrements, the acid, the crunch. Mm -hmm. All yeah. the sweetness, that's just mm -hmm. elevating that meat and cheese combination. That's For sure. But I, I think the part of today's kind of conversation is that there are very little rules. I mm -hmm. mean, we have heat, we yeah, have totally. sweet, we have acid, we have char, we have burnt, and we have these fatty cheeses that are so amazing and everything, yeah. it's like, it's 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 trial and no error. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you yeah. just keep trying that's different really, things. You're like, that's yeah. great. I like that one. Yep. I like this one a little bit more. And you just keep trying different things, and it's just it's limitless. Yeah. Charcuterie brings diverse ingredients together and takes us on an adventure with each pairing. We hope visiting with these food craft artisans inspires you to discover small batch seasonal ingredients while you search for the perfect bite.